Hey there, welcome back. So we're doing another retro coding video. This one's going to be using my nice BBC Micro, which I fixed up in a different video. Um, we're using a ROM that I've got off the internet for Logo, which is a programming language you might or might not have come across. So it could be quite interesting to look at. If you did programming in the 80s, you've seen Logo before. You probably remember what it is. So let's get on with it. Right, this isn't just going to be me showing off Logo and doing whatever it does. I'm also going to have a bit of a chat about how you think like a programmer, because it's something that people don't really talk about. And I teach programming, that's one of my jobs. And the hardest bit for my students to understand is how to take an idea and turn it into what you actually type in on the computer. They find that really difficult. So one of the things I do with the younger kids is teach them Logo as like the first starting point to using a text-based programming environment. And I'm just going to show you what this does because then you'll get an idea for it. So on the BBC, it starts up just in black text like this, and we have to put it into a graphics mode. So we'll use mode one. There we go. And now I have to type in commands. This is 1980s logo. So you get zero help. You need some sort of instructions that I've printed off the internet. And I'm just going to type in some commands. If you've done any form of coding before, these don't look like regular commands. And in fact, when I press the enter key, I've got that on the screen now. Ignore this thing. This is my scout box. It's a bit cheap and nasty. So what's happened here? This is me. This is my little turtle thing. And it's drawn a line. So it's moved forwards a hundred spaces. This is all based around the idea that there used to be this real device that you could drive around the floor of your school classroom and it would follow your instructions. So I'm not really programming the computer, I'm more programming a little creature that's going to walk around my screen and it understands a few very simple instructions. It can go forwards, it can turn right and left and you need to give it a number of degrees so that I've told it right 90. And now if I tell it to go forwards again, it now goes off in a different direction. So this is how you tell the computer to do things. The nice thing for kids, or people who are not that used to programming, is that this is a visual representation of something you're trying to control. It's not this abstract concept of printing characters to a screen or trying to do maths. However, this does let you do that. This is the fun thing about Logo. It slyly teaches you programming concepts without you realizing you're learning them. It also slyly teaches you maths without you realizing, which is a really important thing. Nothing turns people off more than saying, today we're going to learn how to write your name 50 times on the screen. And then we're going to take that code apart and spend 40 minutes learning about the print statement. Then we're going to learn about loops and variables. And it's all going to be very boring and very dry. People don't learn like that. They want to do stuff with their computers. This lets you do stuff. So I'm going to call it just like things. It encourages what I'm going to call recreational programming, which is what all this is. I'm not trying to write some amazing game in this. I'm just having fun programming. And that's one of the ways you learn. A bit like an artist just will sit and doodle because it's fun. Or a musician will sit at their piano or instrument and just start playing tunes. They're not writing them down and trying to sell them. They're just having fun with the instrument. Same thing with a computer. So one of the challenges I set is to draw a box. There's half a box. So can we now get the rest done? So if you think about a box, it's got four sides and four corners and they're all 90 degrees. If I show my kids that much, they can usually figure out the rest. You know, you have to turn right 90 degrees. You have to go forwards 100. Turn right 90 degrees. Go forwards 100. And there's a box. Okay, it's not very exciting, it's not very interesting, but it's a starting point. So maybe you get this wrong. Maybe you've not quite remembered your maths and you've got your angles wrong. Well, in every other programming language, if you do it wrong, you just get an error message. If I escape back into basic, this is the fun thing about doing it on a BBC. It's very immediate. I can just press a key and go somewhere. If I'm in basic and I'm a person who's never done programming before, I've got to get this perfectly right. 
right? If I don't type that in exactly, the computer doesn't understand me. And as a new person programming, this is really hard, okay? I want you to write down in the comments, like, how good do you think you are as a programmer? Are you looking at this just as a bit of entertainment because you found it on a video? Or are you trying to learn something? Because I'm going for a bit of both. You see, if you're an experienced programmer, you look at that and you understand that it's printing hello on the screen and you can imagine in your head what that's doing. However, as a new person, you've just typed some words on a computer. It's no different to typing it in Word. Like, why should I care if I've spelt it wrong? It just means it's spelt wrong. Whoopee. You know, we've all seen Facebook posts full of error messages and mistakes. And people just don't care about grammar too much now. So why should we care with this? You know, these double quote things. What's it matter if I miss one off? Computers accepted it. But then it says this, missing double quotes at line 10. Well, I've got one. Right? Why is it missing? And you start getting annoyed. There's nothing more off-putting as a new person to programming than getting annoyed at your computer because you don't understand why it's broken. Then someone like me wandering along going, oh yeah, you've got a double quote missing there. You need to put one in there. And them going, oh, all right, fair enough. This is just a computer thing, is it? Let's put one in. Fine. How did you know to do that? And you tend to teach them copying code and they get good at copying, but they can't think about it because it's too abstract. There's like, Nothing visual going on. If you do it wrong, you get told off by the computer. And then someone cleverer than you has to come along and tell you the right way to do it. However, with Logo, it's a bit of a more gradual introduction. Like, if I type it in wrong, it tells me it doesn't know what that means. So I do have to learn the commands, and there are shortcuts to them. And it's now telling me I need to be in a certain graphics mode. But it's given me some options, so I don't know. Mode 1 sounds nice. There we go. But suppose I'm trying to draw a box. I know what a box looks like. I can have a go at drawing one. Forwards. I need to know how far forwards. I have no idea. I don't know how big this screen is in whatever these numbers are. So I'm just going to pick a number. 10. I can now see in my head that 10 is very small. So let's try a big number, like a 1,000. And a thousand is too big. I've now got a range of numbers that I can play with. Ten is small, a thousand too big. So hundred is a nice number. I need to work out how to reset the screen. And to be honest, I don't know how to do that in this version of Logo. But I do know if I restart the computer, I'm right back there again. So again, I've just learned that because I don't know how to reset this version of Logo's screen, to be clear. It doesn't understand common things like CLS or clear or whatever. So I'm going to be resetting this machine quite a lot. So I've chosen a BBC. So yeah, as a programmer, how do you think about what you're doing with your code? Do you write algorithms on sheets of paper? Tell me in the comments, because I'm interested in how you do it. I tend to build a visual thing in my head of what's going on. And I think that helps. So trying to draw a box, think about it, you're going, Forward 100, and you're turning right 90. And I've drawn a box. Now we can start to teach some more interesting like concepts about programming. The idea of loops, because I've just repeated the same instruction four times. And the fact I've typed it in, it's really boring to do. As a kid, I'm like, I don't want to type that in. There's got to be an easier way, and there is. You can say repeat four times, forward 100, right turn 90. Just like that. So it does it like this in a list. And now it's just done it. And that's easier. That's more satisfying. I type that stuff in once, and it does it automatically, because that's the point of a computer, surely do things automatically. But then I can think, well, it's still too much typing. Why can't I just make it draw a box? You know, I just want to draw a box, but it doesn't know what that means. And this is now the nice bit. I can teach this something new. Okay. This is quite a nice editor for logo on the BBC. It's got like help and everything. So I can now put my commands in here. 
repeat four times forwards 100 right turn 90 weird thing with the bbc screen modes it occasionally gets these characters changed i don't know why it's just how it is i now know that i press f0 to save it and if i now type box i've done that now as a kid or a new programmer all i've done is thought in my head i've just taught it a new command those of you that know programming i've just taught you how to do a function and i've taught you why they're useful i've just taught you about loops and why they're useful without you realizing it you're using a thing now without realizing you're using it, which is a helpful way of learning stuff. It's much less abstract. There's a reason for knowing the, the concept. You may not know why or how the loop works, and you need to be taught that separately, but at least now we've got something to talk about when we get to that point. You have a visual concrete thing in your head that you can play with. Now, the nice thing about this is that you can start to experiment. You know about loops you know about turning right and left. So what if we did repeat four times, uh, do a box, right turn, I don't know, let's put some random numbers in here, 23. What is this going to do? It's drawn a pattern, okay? For some people, drawing patterns is like good enough. They're having fun doing this. And it's sort of recreational, you know, you're like messing around with the computer, figuring out what the computer can do. Figuring out it's quite slow at doing this. So if you give it some massive number, you're going to be waiting a long time for it to draw whatever it's drawing. So you then start to figure out ways of making it stop. So if I did repeat a bajillion times box, right turn 23, it is going to sit and go through that that many times. And I'm going to get really bored. And I've just noticed that like, they slightly offset each other. So I'm going to let it go until it draws quite round the circle. I think we're nearly there. May not be a complete multiple. Nope. That doesn't matter. So you can see it's drawing some sort of flower shape. But it doesn't perfectly match up. So then that would encourage me to work out what number to put here. And doing a bit of basic maths to figure out which numbers work. Or I might just leave this running and like, like the pattern it's drawing. I press escape, it stops. That's how you make it give up. I think that clears the screen for me. So this way of learning by experimentation is really good if you're like a new programmer, because it gives you something to like play with. And there is a book that I'll put the title up on the screen for you. It goes through that whole way of thinking. And um, let's have a play. Right, I'm going to make it draw a spiral on the screen. But I need to think what that means. So what is a spiral? It's kind of a shape that starts in the middle and goes around itself and moves out. Well, how do I do that just using the only commands that I know so far? Going forwards and turning right. Well, maybe I go forwards 10. I turn right. And now if I do 90 degrees, I'll just end up drawing a box. And I don't want to draw a box, I want to draw some sort of spiral thing. But then also the distance I move needs to change. So I'm starting to imagine this in my head, and that's the important bit about learning to program. Thinking about how you're going to do the thing. Well then accepting you might get it wrong. So let's try right 90, because it's all I know so far. But I don't want to go forward to 10, because if I just repeat that, draw a box. So let's go forward to 20. And turn right 90 and go forwards 30. Turn right 90, forwards 40. Right 90, forwards 50. And you can see it's drawing a spiral. Okay? This takes a lot of typing. And there might be a way of simplifying it using a loop, but that number is getting 10 times bigger each time. And I don't know how to store data inside this. Okay, I've not been taught variables yet or anything like that. But we can do some maths. And an example from the book secretly teaches you recursion, which is something that even like experienced programmers still get tripped up with. 
But here's a nice way of learning it, watch. Create this command called SPI for spiral. I need to give it how big to draw this spiral. So I need to tell it the distance. And we need to go forwards to distance. We need to turn right 90. Then we're going to draw a spiral that is distance plus five. And that should be it. And I don't quite know what that number is, so let's just type it in. There we go. So this is drawing a spiral. And it's drawn a very nice, neat, compact, uniformly designed one that looks good. But how's it working? Oops. Okay, if we look at this code, this first bit creates the function and we give it some information. So we tell it how far to draw the lines of the spiral. So I'm, I'm like teaching you all about function parameters now without you realizing it. We're going forwards however much you've told it. We're turning right 90. We're then doing this line, which calls that function again with the same distance, but five added on. So that's the gap between each spiral. And this will never stop because it keeps calling itself over and over and over again. So this is recursion, but it's a visual way of seeing it. Like you can imagine in your head now, each time it draws a line, it started a new function and then it's done another one. And it's just keeping on going. Trying to teach recursion to new programmers or ones that have been doing it a while, but never encountered it is really hard because there's no easy way of teaching it. Let's stop you there. But then because it's a command, maybe we edit it slightly to make a different pattern. Like this turning right 90, let's change it slightly to 93. You can see now it's drawing a nice spiral pattern. I've not done anything different to the code other than change that degree that it turns by a couple of degrees. Let's have a go at drawing a more complicated pattern. Something that is all based off a very simple set of instructions. I'm going to draw a little garden of flowers. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is somehow draw a flower, which, you know, is a complex shape. It's got petals, it's got a stem, it's got leaves. However, a simple version of a flower. So we're going to try and draw a flower. Well, they start off with a leaf or a petal. And a petal is just two semicircles put together. So I need to teach it how to draw a circle. It doesn't know that one. Okay, it doesn't know circle. I'm going to teach it something called, we'll put an arc. And we need to tell it the radius. So we need to repeat. I'm just going to type this code in because the maths behind it is a bit more than I can be bothered explaining. So now if I touch to draw an arc of 10, this may have gone wrong. Yes, this has gone wrong. However, this is the nice thing about doing this. It's not broken. I've not got an error message I have to debug. I've got the wrong visual thing on the screen. So let's have a look in here. Ah, my right turn is wrong. That should be 10. There we go, now it works. We've got a semicircle. So if I want to draw that a leaf, it's that going back to itself. So how do I make it go back to itself? If I turn right 90 degrees and draw another one, I've now got a leaf or a flower petal, depending on what it's going to be. So what we'll do is we'll create a command called petal that draws that. So we'll do two petal. 
and in here we just do uh, an arc of 50, turn right 90, do an arc of 50, turn right 90. So there's one petal. If we do four together, we can make a flower. But I'm going to use a loop because the code to draw this requires about eight or ten petals together. And I don't want to type that all out, so I'll make a loop instead. So repeat ten times. Do a petal, turn right. Enough maths to make it go around a circle. Ten steps. And there we go. That should do it. Flower. While it's drawing this, those of you that understand programming are probably looking at this and kind of seeing where I'm going with it, in that this is teaching some quite complex um, concepts that are really hard to get across to another person. Like when I teach programming to students, I'm trying to teach them how to problem solve. And it's really difficult because how do you teach someone to think? Like if I give you some task to do and you didn't know how to do the task and you weren't quite sure what the task even meant, you wouldn't know how to begin. It's like if you know the general ideas of cooking and I told you to make a spaghetti bolognese, You'd need to know what went in it. But once you've got all the meat and things, you'd probably understand that it looks like a certain way. And it's probably made up from food that you've got to cook. So you'd understand how to fry food and put it together in a pot and stir it so it doesn't burn. But that first learning thing where you need to learn how not to burn the food and how to taste if it is nice, that's hard to learn without a lot of trial and error. It's the same with computing, but the trial and error is about thinking. And how do you know if you've thought something correctly? It's really difficult. So using things like this, it lets us explore that way of thinking. And that now looks like a flower. It's all made up from basic building blocks that we've built up together. It's all understandable. You can look at that and know why it's drawn it, right down to why each pixel is on the screen. So now maybe we can make big and small flowers. So that would be something to mess with. Like, how do I tell it to draw a small flower or a big flower? Well, it's hard-coded to be a certain size. Right, there's 10 petals, so maybe I could modify that. Um, the petals are all 50, so maybe I can change that. So if we go up here, I want to tell it the size of the petal. So we'll have S for size because it's easy to type. And you see now I'm secretly teaching variables because you can say, well, the S is representing the size we're going to tell it. But now if I try and draw a flower, it now has a problem with it. So, because we've not told it how big the flower should be. So maybe we need to tell the flower its size. So if I go for flower 10, this should draw a small one. Yep, there we go. This is drawing it too small. This doesn't look nice. It just looks like a messy blob. So I've now learned that 10 is far too small. So let's draw 50. There we go, it's nearly finished. Modern computers have come along a lot since this, haven't they? By the way, you don't need a BBC to mess around with this. You could use an emulator, or you can use Python. There is a turtle add-on for Python, which you can use. You don't even need to install anything on your computer. 
you can go onto one of those Python trinkets and play around with it in there. And there's quite a lot of example things. It does color as well. I can't work out how color works on this one. There is a color command. It doesn't seem to change the color of what I'm drawing. So we've got a petal, well, a flower head. We now want the rest of the flower. So let's have a look. We'll cut plant. And we're going to draw a flower of size 50. We're then going to go backwards 50. So remember, this is trying to drive what was once a little plastic robot around the floor. So it can go forwards and it can drive backwards without turning round. We're then going to draw a petal, which represents the leaf. We're going to go back 50, and that should then draw like the flower head, go down, draw a petal, and go down. So I've got this visual idea in my head, as well as it drawn on a piece of paper next to me. So now if I type in plant, while it draws this plant, I think you'll agree that if this was your first exposure to programming, it would be much more interesting and engaging than trying to copy out pages and pages of basic listings. Like, you don't need to understand how the graphic system works. You're not being taught about pixels and things. You're just being taught how to draw stuff. Which, if you're new, this is quite nice and like engaging. You will outgrow this though. Like most people go, oh yeah, it's logo. I use that as a kid. I kind of get the forwards, backwards, turn right thing. But then I want to move on and actually write a real program. And yeah, you can't do that using this. However, it is good for teaching like some of the basic concepts. It's also, like I said before, just fun to play with. There is time where you just want to do some coding and you've got no idea what you want to do and you don't want to spend hours doing it. You just want to like have fun for an hour doing a bit of programming thinking so that you can keep your skills sharp. So this is something you can do and it's about to draw the rest of it. Oh no, it's broken. So here, there's a bug this stupid thing goes away. So it says BK has no meaning. So, okay, I guess in this version of turtle, FD means forwards. It doesn't know BK is backwards. I'm assuming it knows back. No, it doesn't. Is it backward? Right, let's speed through this again. Time lapse, go. Okay, it's coming up to the bit where it stopped working before. It's actually quite nice that this runs at this speed, really, because you can anticipate when it's going to do something that might break it. Like, it's going to finish drawing this. Is it then going to go downwards? It is, but then I've broken it because I've not told it the petal thing. Yeah, that's right. So there's something wrong with the rest of my instructions. Oh, it's the plant one. I'm in the wrong code. Right, so there was a bug in the code. Um, I need to put a number here. This is how big the leaf is going to be. Well, each flower's thing is 50. Flower petals, flower leaves don't always have the same size. So let's make it a little bit smaller. You can see this is quite rapid. Apart from the speed of this poor little one megahertz computer that can only just keep up with drawing pixels. It's quite quick at editing and trying stuff. And I'm persevering with this. I want to see this work. You know, as far as programming goes, this is kind of pointless. You know, I'm just having fun with a computer for an afternoon. I don't really care if I can't draw a plant, but I'm invested in the idea now. I want to see it through. Let's see if it works. Do some more fantastic time lapse. It's all right for you. This site like, takes seconds as I fast forward through it. For me, I've actually got to sit here for about a minute whilst it painfully draws each section. So 
So like I was saying, when you try and teach people how to program, there's several key concepts they've got to understand that are, they're not a visual thing. It's not like in maths where you can draw circles and measure them and understand it. And it's not even like programming where you can type stuff in and see it happen. You've got to teach them how to think up an algorithm, which is a set of steps and involving breaking that down into smaller pieces. And all the examples you give people are very text-based because it's hard to do graphics when you're first learning. So you tend to do lots of printing things on the screen. But then you start trying to create reasons for having form functions and reasons for doing maths, and it gets a bit convoluted at times. Or you end up with a program that is massive, and the poor new person who's never done coding before suddenly has to look at a screen full of text and understand everything that's going on. And that's really hard if you're new. Right, is it going to draw this? I think. Yeah, it is, but it's in the wrong place. So, there we go. Back has no thing, because I've done it wrong again. Plant. So, there's yet more bugs, done from testing. This is where it does get frustrating, and this is a thing you also have to learn. Programming does get really annoying. Like, I've just sat through that in real time, watched it draw it all and gone, oh, it's put the leaf in the wrong place. I have to sit through that now because 30 is not enough and 50 is wrong. And maybe if I plan this on a piece of paper, I could have figured it out a bit better than trial and error. So let's try 200 for that bit. Back is not what it should be. I even told you it was backward, I think. Yes, because backward up there. So I just wasn't paying attention. I was too busy talking to you. So it teaches you these subtle little things as well, like pay attention to what you're doing. Think before you spend like 20 minutes setting your program off to do something. Because we only have so much attention span anyway. So, plant. Time lapse. But also, I now know that this will work. Like... I've seen this running enough times that I understand it's going to go down enough to draw it properly. So we'll see. So in the comments, tell me, what was your first programming language? Are you a person like me who used to use these computers back in the 80s and 90s? And typing basic in was your first experience. Or are you a more modern programmer who, I don't know, you learnt JavaScript? You learnt Python as your first language? Maybe you jumped straight into some more higher level things such as Scratch? What did you use as your first language? And also, how did you learn how to think like a programmer? Or is that still something that you find difficult to do? Like here it's drawn a leaf, but it's going to shoot off the bottom. So maybe the bottom bit needs to only be like, three or something like right so this 200 here is too big and this bit here is crazy but i quite like the shape so we'll do one more thing just to fix it so 200 was far too big um 50 was not right 100 was probably good enough but i'm going to be careful and do let's do it here 80. But then because it's the end, we're just going to go back 10. There. Now I want to experiment with something I've just seen. Is there a random function? Don't know what to do with point 0.1. Oh, random 10. Random between 0 and 10. No. Random times 50. Right, this is useful. So whilst I've been thinking and like waiting for this to draw, I've had some ideas. I've looked through the little book that I'm trying to follow generally with a bit of idea. And the little picture of lots of flowers on the screen. They have this function called slide, which just like lets you move the turtle sideways across the screen. And this is a difficult thing with turtle, right? Where you do eventually have to stop using it. It's all based on driving a physical object. It's not the screen coordinates. So you can't draw a picture because you can't give it the coordinate of this corner here. You've got to drive to it like an etch-a-sketch. 
and it just gets a bit annoying. But we can still make this do what we want. If I do two slide and it takes distance. Right, so pen up and I don't know if it's like that, it might be. So right 90. Forward that much. Left 90. Pen down. This works, I can move it across the screen. No, it doesn't like pen up. Which means it's all one word. Logo is like basic. There is a standard that is different for everybody's version of basic. The version I'm using out this book is not the same as this BBC version. In fact, on the BBC, there's three different versions and they're all different. They all understand the basic folds backwards, left, right stuff, but the spelling of it and the way you type it is always a little bit different, which adds a bit of fun to writing this out. There we go. Can I go backwards? I can. So I can now drive it around the screen. So let's have a think. We can make a line of them. So if I side minus 400, oops, I've gone too far. Come back, there we are. Right, let's draw. Um, this is gonna take ages to draw, isn't it? It's gonna like draw each flower individually. So I need to think this through a bit more now, with a bit more thought. Just to make sure that I don't set this off for like a five minute thing that draws garbage across the screen. Um, so I'm going to break this down into smaller parts. I want to use random because I'll just end up with like a line of them across the screen. Which is fine, but I don't want that. I want them sort of wherever. So let's work out how to use random. I don't know how to make it pick random negative numbers. So can we ever go that way? And also, I don't know how to make it go forwards or backwards. I don't know how to do if statements in this. I've not bothered learning. I don't even know if it can. Oh, it can do. Hmm. This may be a Turing complete language. That's something to consider. Could you write the game of life using this? So what we're we trying to do, we're trying to like go up and down that way across the screen. Okay, so let's try a new command called garden. Right, so what we're trying to do, we're trying to draw flowers across the screen in a variety of positions, up and down. How many flowers do we want? Because that's like a controlling thing. Let's just go for five of them. I don't know how to do multi-line repeats, they just don't seem to work. Like, if you've done logo before, you're probably thinking, well, just do like repeat five, and then you can do quad hundred, up to 90, and then you put end. But it doesn't work. It's like, not enough input in procedure garden. Well, It doesn't want any input. Yeah, if I do repeat five, not enough input. And then it complains missing thing. So it's like the repeat has to be on one line. I know I'm going a bit deep with this at the moment, but that's my programmer brain taking over trying to solve a problem. So it gets a bit annoying. Um, garden. Bear with me, I've broken it. This is why I picked this version, because it has the help at the top. So if I press F5, I can split the line. There. You can tell this is an English program, because it uses the old word rub out. 
which I believe in other languages means something different. And it doesn't mean delete. You know what? I'm not going to bother because it's going to be too difficult typing it on one single line. I'll keep getting it wrong because it takes so long to draw each flower. It'll just end up spending a week drawing incorrect stuff. So we will go for... Um, whoops. No, it's plant in it. In fact, I've spent so long doing this, I've forgotten what plant does now. Plant. Just run plant, right. The delete does not work like you think it should do. Now, we'll do two plants next to each other with a distance between them that's random. Might need to make that number a bit bigger though, because. Well, it's not going to give you a very big number, is it? So it's like 100 points something or 30 points something. So let's get rid of the random. I do want 100. And then 110. I'm going to wait for this stupid thing to go away. What you can't see down here is a big collection of little boxes I bought off the internet that convert BBC Micro into HDMI, split the HDMI in half so I can capture it and see it. Right, garden, go. Oh, it draws them below each other, because, yeah, this is part of the turtle thing, where you've got to think, like, where you stop and where the next part is. Well, there we go. It's going to draw that one there, that one there, and one further down, which is a bit annoying, but there we go. You know, I think, even as a kid in the 80s who thought computers were the most amazing things ever, that just simply farting around typing on them was cool to me, this would have pushed my attention span, you know. Like, I'm persevering with it because... Okay, I'm going to draw two. Fine. Persevered with it because I wanted to see if it actually worked. But as a kid, I think I would have got bored sometime about here. You know, this little one megahertz machine just finds doing this very difficult. Um, does it still understand the spiral one, or did I lose that? Oh, it does. Good. I don't know how to put the turtle back in the middle. It's, it's down here somewhere, I've lost it. But I've got this on the screen, it looks quite nice. So, which way was it going? Let's try. Oh. I've lost it completely, haven't I? Yep. Um, oh dear. <laughs> the turtle is somewhere up there. I have no idea where it's gone. I'm going to have to reset this to get it back to the middle. Which means I've l I'm going to lose all my code. Which would be really annoying, because there's lots of things I've typed in. Fortunately, it does understand the disk. Put the disk in. Right, so we've got one called circle, one called stuff. Let's save this as... Now what I learned, you see there's one called stuff, with a quote at the end. That's because in every language I've ever used, the quotes go in pairs. Except on this version of Logo, on this computer, where they don't go in pairs, you just put one at the start. Which totally goes against the thing I said at the beginning about print. 
There we go, we've saved it. Right, let's reset the machine. See, now it doesn't know anything. Now it does. Right, there we go. I think that'll do. Um, this is a nice introduction to some of the things we used to do with these computers back in the day. You can imagine being the kid doing the typing and you'd have three mates sat around doing the boring watching before it was their turn. Because back then we had just one of these machines in each classroom. Um, hopefully this was interesting in some way to you. A bit of an insight into how programmers think and how to maybe go about teaching someone how to think like a programmer. Um, I think I'll do some more of these videos. I've got some other ancient languages I want to look at. Like, I found a ROM chip image of Forth, and I think I found some other really, really old languages that'll be fun to explore. So, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you know, do the YouTube thing. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.